Hi there, Lindsay here, The Frugal Crafter. Today we're going to do an oil painting on an eight by eight stretched canvas. I've got my paints laid out on my palette and my canvas ready to go on an inclined board. And I like to do that because it helps avoid glare since my lights are in front of me. I'll also be using some solvent-free gel to dilute my paints in the first layers so that they can dry a little bit quicker. If you would like a real-time version of this lesson, you can find it up in Critique Club over at lindsaywyrick.teachable.com. I'm also running a special on my full classes over on Teachable. I'll have all the information in the video description, but if you use the coupon code FUN40, you can save 40% on the class of your choice. I am beginning by sketching on the flowers with an oil pastel. I love this technique because the pastel will basically turn into paint as you add your oil paints into it. In fact, you could even sketch on with an oil pastel and use either a, um, uh, like a mineral spirits or solvent-free gel or linseed oil to turn it into paint. But I usually just sketch it on and then I paint on top. I find that my lines stay true for um, as long as I need them to, and then they eventually just kind of dissolve into the paint, making it a... Um, a, a seamless transition. If you've ever tried sketching on to your canvas with pencil um, and notice that you can get those pencil lines ghosting through your final painting, um, that's, that's not a great look. So I recommend using either thin down oil paint or an oil pastel to do your, your initial sketch if you happen to have oil pastels. I love oil pastels as a medium, so it works perfectly for me. And you don't have to have very expensive oil pastels. Whatever you have around is gonna be fine, even if you don't like them that much for oil pastels work. They're still going to get the job done for doing that first sketch. And it's going to be under your paint, so you don't really have to worry about the light fastness quality. Although that said, I am using Paul Rubin's oil pastels and they are fairly light fast. They all have their information right on the tube so you can check it out and make sure that you, um, you like the pigments that they're using. And I'm also using something that's brand new, at least brand new to the American market. I'm using the Paul Rubin's oil paints. Now I'm actually going to apologize if I talk fast today because I have, this is like the fifth time I've tried to record this because it's so loud in my neighborhood. I'm filming this on Saturday or recording this on Saturday. And every time I turn on the microphone to do the voiceover, I swear somebody starts um, leaf blowing or chainsawing or <laughs> doing something loud outside. Um, so, so I apologize. I've been feeling a little frazzled today and I'm trying not to let those vibes uh, seep into the <laughs> seep into the tutorial. Um, I did add a little alizarin crimson to my cobalt blue and white to do some faraway hills. And I'm using, uh, it's called tree green, but it's very comparable to an American sap green, what we'd normally see as sap green. And I'm adding some lemon yellow to that as I bring it down further on the canvas because you want colors to get warmer as they get closer to the viewer and that's gonna give you more depth. So if you think of it this way, cool colors recede or, or push back and warm colors advance or come forward. So having kind of like cooler greens in the background, that purple, faraway mountains, it's just going to give you a little bit more depth. Even though this is kind of like a close-up of flowers, it's still nice to have a little bit of that, um, that depth in the background. I'm using some alizarin crimson here with some solvent-free gel, which is, I'm using this instead of mineral spirits here to thin my paint. Um, it's an alkyd medium that will make your paint dry a little faster. Now I did experiment with that with some water mixable oils and it was not compatible, but it is compatible with all of your oil paints. So if you've got that, I got one in a, a subscription box once and, um, uh, and it works really great with your regular paints, especially if you think you may need to let the paint sit up uh, or set up for a couple of days to dry and then work over them, which I ended up doing here. I'm basically just blocking in. I like to get my darks in first, so that's why you see the crimson in there. And then I layer in my white. And the reason I do that is because white is such a strong color and such an overwhelming color that if I put the white down first and then I try to add in my darker colors, I might not be able to achieve the value that I want. So, um, and that just saves you from putting on tons and tons and tons of paint. It, he makes it so that you can paint something in one or two layers versus having to uh, let it dry and go over and over again. So anyway, that's that's been my case. I like this palette. It is basically, actually it's, um, I don't think you can just buy it on its own. It's a leftover from the Turner Acryl gouache set that I had a few years ago. I've used up all the paints long ago, but I just couldn't get rid of the palette because it was so wonderful. It was, um, it's the palette the paints are sold in. So you get this box with all the paints right in there, but the, the lid of this little storage box is a palette. But the wonderful thing about that is the, the storage box is only about an inch thick. So when I'm done painting for the day, I can put that, the, 
the bottom basically over my palette and it keeps dust out of my paint and it will keep my paint wetter for a little bit longer. Oil paint's not going to dry overnight, so uh, so that's good, but you can actually, I put, um, there was vent holes on it. I actually taped over the vent holes and I, um, I just sealed it up until I'm ready to use the rest of the paint because friends, I took too much paint. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to be honest with you. See those colors there at the bottom of my palette? Took way too much. Didn't need that much for the size canvas. Um, this paint is a really nice quality paint and a little goes a long way. So um, yeah, take out less. <laughs> the white, I did get through all the white. And if you notice the white, I have three dollops of white and I've kind of worked through two of them almost by now. And the reason I put three dollops of paint anytime I'm painting with oils or acrylics is because um, you can contaminate them. If you have just one really big gob of white, it's really easy to get that contaminated and end up wasting a bunch of it. So by putting several dabs, you end up, um, you can use it up without contaminating. Or if you know you're mixing some white into red, and you're going to keep going back to that mix, you could go into that dollop for your warm colors, you can go into a dollop for your cool colors, or you can just kind of use one up and then go on to the next one. Um, and it just reduces your contamination between colors. Uh, the paint that I'm using is new. It is the Paul Rubens Artist Oil Colors. And I don't know how long this line of paint has been around, but it is new to the American market and you can buy them in individual tubes on Amazon. So if you want to try a couple colors, I think they have something like I think there's around 40 colors. There's a lot. Um, so if you want to try a few colors and, uh, and see what you think, I would highly encourage you, if you want to do that, to look at the pigment numbers because that's going to make more sense to what colors you're going to get than some of the names. Some of the names are not what we commonly call things in um, the Western paint world. So like that sap green color I have, they call it tree green. Um, the like burnt umbery color I have there, they're, they call it... Um, uh, earth earth brown or burnt burnt earth or something like that um the cobalt blue is cobalt blue uh then there's a kind of an indian yellow uh, they call it like transparent medium yellow i think and alizarin crimson is the same obviously uh but you know i would definitely take a peek at the pigment numbers to make sure that that's the type of you know, brown or green or whatever that you like. And I love that they have that information. I did recently, when I was looking for these paints on Amazon, I saw that they have some sets, but I'm not sure if the sets are the same quality because sometimes when paints come out in sets, um, they will offer like a student grade version in a set and then have individual tubes for artist grade. I don't know if that's the case here. I've got to talk to the, um, the Paul Rubens company that sent me the paints and ask them. But um, I'm really happy with these oils and I didn't realize it would be so strongly tinting. So I took way too much out. Um, I'm blocking in right now, just getting the canvas covered pretty much. And every, anything I've added to the paint this far has been the solvent-free gel. You could also use Gamzol or whatever mineral spirits you like. Um, I like using the gel versus just using the mineral spirits from my brush washer because, you know, it can get kind of gross and contaminated. My brush washer contains um, lavender uh, cleaner from Chelsea Studio, I think it's called. I think it's a lavender brush cleaner, um, but it's a solvent anyway. Uh, and I have it in a jar. I showed you at the beginning of the video, so you can scroll back there if you want to see, but it's um, it's called a silicoil, and I, I've shown them in tutorials in the past. What it is is a glass jar, about the size of like a Tostito salsa jar, maybe a little fatter, and it's got this, um, this wire coil in there, kind of on a spring, and it is coated with silicone, so it's very gentle on your brushes, and you just kind of run your brushes over the silicone uh, spiral, and it knocks the paint out without damaging your brushes. So I really like that. I have, before I got that, I actually made one. I just took some window screening and put it in the bottom of a, of a mason jar so that the screening, basically what, why you have that kind of that spring and that screening up above the bottom is so all the paint solids can fall to the bottom and you've got fresh like cleaner up at the top. And then, um, and this is the real reason I do this, after I'm done painting, a couple days after usually, uh, all the pigment solids will settle to the bottom of the jar. So I have like an empty spaghetti sauce jar uh, in my studio. I will pour off the good um, clear or clearish mineral spirits that I can still use again. And then I pull out the spring and I wipe out the paint solids. And I just let that dry in like a open, in like a paint can, just let it dry out. And then I can dispose of it so that it's just like pigment solids and it's not, um, and it's not uh, the solvent. So it makes it so my brush cleaner lasts for a really long time. I'm not disposing of brush cleaner or paint thinner that I can use again. So there, it's going to save you some money, especially if you like to buy a better quality of a solvent, like say maybe you want to buy Gamzol because it doesn't have the fumes um, or it's odorless. 
it's kind of expensive. So you don't want to be dumping that all the time. You know, you want to conserve that. Plus, you don't want to be dumping out those solvents. I, it can't be good. It can't be good to be dumping that out, right? Or just throwing it away in like a, in a jar. I don't think that, that companies like that. I don't think the trash companies like that. So, um, you know, be when you're going to use something like oils, just, just keep that in mind. So that way you can be kinder to the earth and you can still enjoy your painting. I also like water soluble oil paints a lot. Um, and with those, you would just use water when you want to thin down that first layer. You don't thin it down too much, but you can use a little water and use water to rinse off your brushes. So it's definitely a lot less, um, uh, less stinky <laughs> and less environmentally problematic. So, um, but you know, you can use traditional oils with care and, and, uh, minimize your impact as well. So thought I'd, thought I'd give you that public service announcement. Uh, now probably nobody wants to try oil paints. <laughs> But, uh, but if you do, I'm, I am enjoying these Paul Rubens oils. And I'll link everything in the video description if you want to take a uh, look at that. Um, I would give these a pretty positive review. Now, I've got to disclaim that um, that I don't paint with oils a ton. When I do, I usually use water mixable oils. Um, I like the Berlin water mixable oils a lot because they act like real oil paints. I've used other brands that are kind of um, like watery and almost sticky. But, um, but I like the Berlin. So if you want a water mixable one, I would recommend that. But if you want, um, if you want traditional oil paints, these are really nice. Uh, keep in mind that other than the Berlin oils, I tend to use, I've used Winton for so long. Those are the Winsor Newton kind of student grade oil paints. And I really like those. So I don't know if I'm as discer discerning with oil paints as I am with like say watercolors, but I, I'm enjoying these. I probably won't do a full review just because I don't feel um, like I've tried enough other artist grades of of uh, oil paints to make a good comparison. And I don't intend to go buy a bunch of artist grade oil paints because I have enough to last my lifetime. Um, I used to teach adult oil painting and I used to buy those honkin' tubes of Winton and um, I still have a lot of honkin' tubes of Winton paint. <laughs> so I think I'm set for life. And honestly, I've always been real happy with it. So, um, you know, I think as long as you get a decent brand of oil paint, you're gonna be fine. So, you know, if you've got some in your drawer, use that first before you go looking around for other stuff. You might as well, right? It lasts really long. As long as a tube, somebody asked me, I have I said they had some tubes from when they were their mother's oil paints and they were wondering if they were any good. And if the tube is squishy, they should be fine. You should be able to use them. Um, linseed oil generally doesn't go rancid like some other oils will, and that's usually what the oil is in oil paint. So I'd give them a give them a try. If they've dried out and gone hard, they're you know gonna be able to reconstitute them. But if they're still squishy in the tube, then go for it. So what I've done here at this point, I actually set my canvas. I had a nail on the wall. I set it on that nail on the wall and just left it for two days because it was just too greasy. I couldn't get any definition, and um, I knew it was just gonna be a battle if I kept working on it. So um, the nice thing with a stretched canvas, if you can like stick a tack in the wall or a couple tacks in the wall, you can just rest the painting on there. Now keep in mind, if you're painting all the way to the edges, you might get paint on your wall. So I guess if you wanted to be smart, you could tape a piece of like newsprint to the wall and then put a couple tacks through it. And then you could rest your painting there out of the way where cat hair isn't going to settle on it or dust or anything. But um, just giving this a couple days to set up was all the difference. So I could go in and I could add some more layers. Now that green is still wet. If I have to be careful when I'm doing the edges of things that I don't just drag that green paint onto my white flower. So you could let it dry longer, like let it dry, like dry to the touch. Uh, the tubes of, of paint said they had 72 hours before dry to the touch, which sounds pretty fast to me. I guess it would depend on how thick you applied it. If you're looking for a fast drying oil paint, I would recommend the Lucas 1862 oil paints. They dry um, to the touch like overnight. It's kind of crazy. Um, or you could go with like an Alkyd, an Alkyd paint. I've never purchased Alkyd paint, so I don't really know much about them. Just like straight Alkyds, but they are meant to dry faster than a, um, than a traditional oil. I think they're kind of like a sign painter's paint. I'm using some synthetic brushes here, and one of the ones I really like for adding these final details is the Fusion line from Royal and Magnical. I like it because the bristles are synthetic. They have a little bit more firmness than, say, a regular golden tacklon brush, and um, they just really uh, let me get a fine detail and also push the paint around, even with a round brush. Oftentimes, round brushes just really don't handle uh, oil paints very well, but I find that these do. I decided to add a little bit of refined linseed oil onto this layer in these paints because it's going to let this layer dry a little slowly than or slower than what I had down previously. So I used a solvent or solvent-free gel, which is a fast drying medium 
on the first layer and I'm using a little bit of refined linseed oil on this layer because it's going to dry slower. So when you're painting with oil paints, you want to make sure that the layers on top dry slower than the layers on the bottom because otherwise if your layer on top dried quicker, you would end up with cracking and you don't want that to happen to your painting. So that's what the fat over lean rule essentially is. Um, and you can research that more if it's unclear, but uh, basically you want each layer to dry slower than the previous layer. I used a really soft brush, kind of similar to a makeup brush. It's called a mop to soften and blend out some of my harsh lines. And um, now I'm going in with some alizarin crimson with a fine little uh, synthetic brush and just kind of redefining those little streaks from the center of the flower. Now here's another tip. If you like to use a bunch of different medias, which I assume you probably do if you're watching my channel because we use all kinds of stuff, um, when a brush is no longer suitable for say um, acrylics or watercolor, I will often I don't want to say denigrate it, but I will donate it to my oil painting stash because the um, like linseed oil and the viscosity of the oil paints and just that oily binder, it really can make those bristles stick back together well and give you fine points when it wouldn't do that in your water-based media. So that's kind of like a one last uh, lease on life for your brushes from other media. When I was really broke as a young artist, what I used to do was if a, if a brush stopped being useful for watercolor, then I would donate it to the acrylics um, stash and then if it started to get too frayed to use with acrylics, then I was dedicated to the oil stash and it really helped me extend the life of my brushes. I will say though, now that I'm older, I do take care of my watercolor brushes a lot better. So I really rarely have to uh, have to discard one or, or denigrate one to a different medium. I think I'm, you know, I also, obviously I am more um, experienced and I prefer watercolors so those are always my most pristine my, my most pristine, pristine supplies but um, I do enjoy oils a lot as well and uh, another thing I wanted to mention if you want to try these techniques but you can't handle oil paints due to the fumes um, there is an, a brand of acrylic paints that I recommend called open acrylic by the golden paint company and your working time with it so like sitting down at the table to paint um, you'll have like about an hour hour and a half of working time so it's very similar to painting with oils and then um, then you want to leave it be because it's gonna get kind of sticky you got to stop painting when it gets to the sticky stage but then the next day it will be dry enough to go over it'll be cured and you can paint on top so that would be my recommendation if you really like the look of this or the um, the layering up of this and just the application of the oil paint but you just don't want to use oils I highly would recommend giving the golden open acrylics a try I'll probably um, I'll try to remember to reference everything that I talked about in the video description. I hope I don't forget. Um, but uh, just another alternative because I, I know we don't all paint the same medias, but sometimes it's fun to try the same products. And, um, and yeah, it's, it's just a nice, a nice, a nice thing to try. You can also use slow dry medium or a medium retarder for your regular acrylic paints. Although I find that it's not still not quite as, um, it's still not the same as oil paints. I think the golden open acrylics are probably the closest because you don't lose that buttery consistency with the paint like you do when you use the slow dry medium sometimes with acrylics. But then again, I don't paint with acrylics that much. So you may have devised some other, other plan that works really well for you. So here I'm just kind of um, adding highlights to the leaves. I decided to make this leaf a little bit bigger and let it go over the edge to help kind of maybe downplay the uh, Little Shop of Horrors bud we have going on in the background. <laughs> but that's how it really looked in the reference photo. These are large blooms. So, uh, so the buds are pretty big too. Um, but I figured, yeah, let's do a bigger leaf there. That will just help uh, help distract <laughs> from that petal. And that's what I ended up doing. And just a little bit of white at the end really makes those those leaves and buds pop and um, and look really special, I think. Now, if you do get any, like, maybe streaking into the petals that you don't like, maybe you get some green or something like that, your best bet is to be patient. Let it dry at least a couple days so you can, like, it's not sticky or not transferring onto your finger if you touch it. Then you can go in and um, paint over that area with just add a little linseed oil to your paint so it's not going to crack or anything and you can go in and touch things up trying to do it and fight a strong color with white um even though white's really powerful it still can be aggravating because you're going to get some of that you know ghosting color now for final highlights i decided i would add a little bit of the warm yellow into some white and um 
add that to different petals just to give it kind of a warm glow. And I'm also adding a little bit more to the centers of the flowers to give it that, uh, give that really punchy yellow center that the hibiscus has, the stamen. It's, um, they're, they're so pretty. They're such pretty flowers. They're not flowers we see around here very often. So I just couldn't resist grabbing a bunch of photos when I was visiting my parents and, um, and trying to recreate it in paint. And I decided to use oil paint because I hadn't in a while. And um, I actually happen to really like the smell of oil paint, not the solvent so much, but the actual, just the linseed oil. It's such a comforting smell to me. Uh, my parents were, um, how they built houses when I was a kid and mom always did all the staining and just that smell of linseed oil is a very homey, uh, homey smell to me and I really like it. But that pretty much does it. I hope you found this interesting. If you'd like the real-time version of this lesson, you can go find it in Critique Club over at lindsaywyrick.teachable.com. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.